What's up guys, CrazyHD here. Today I'm bringing you guys a video about my life story. So I posted my life story about two, maybe three years ago. Um, and at that time it was fresh. It was still right after my dad's heart transplant. So I mainly focused on talking about my heart, my dad's heart transplant and talked less and less about myself. So I want to look at this two years later, look at how I've improved as a person, how I've changed as a person and see how I've matured and things like that. So this is my updated life story. <clears throat> so I was born April 23rd, 1999. Um, I've always known both of my parents. My parents are still together to this day. I live with them still. Um, and I have an older sister who was born April 23rd, 1996. So she's exactly three years older than me to the day. Um, so... Yeah, we always make jokes about me stealing her birthday and stuff, but I always say I'm the best birthday present she ever got. So, yeah. Um, I don't really remember much until August of 2001, or I'm sorry, August of 2002, um, when I was in Disney World with my mom and dad and my sister, and uh, just Florida altogether. It's the only time I've ever been to Florida, and I barely remember it. I remember ordering a pizza at, like, Two o'clock in the morning to our hotel. I remember getting on the teacup ride or whatever, the the Dumbo ride or whatever, going to the parade. Um, I remember riding on a ship, and and I remember the plane, the flight home. So that's really it for what I remember about that. Um, and that's my earliest memory. So that's uh, kind of cool. Um, so growing up, I was, my sister and I argued a lot and, uh, like mostly we argued when we were like, I was three, she was six and for whatever reason, we just hated each other at that age. Um, but I've always been very close to my sister. She's been the one who's really helped me get through everything. So, um, I was a relatively happy kid, normal childhood, uh, from preschool up until like fourth grade. Um, and in fourth grade is when I started getting bullied. Um, you guys have heard my story about being bullied. Um, I used some examples of some kid telling me to kill myself for saying I finished homework and stuff like that. And what I never said in that video was that I almost did. So that was in sixth grade or seventh grade. So fast forward to after that incident and I was also always very depressed, so I, that just made it worse. So I started seeing a therapist right before I transferred out, so I guess I'm backtracking a little bit. Right before I transferred out of my original school, I started seeing a new therapist. And he has helped me a lot. I still go to him every other week. Um, he went from helping me with issues with my depression and anxiety to helping me with minor symptoms of PTSD and some depression and anxiety also but he's definitely helped me get a lot better i'm a lot happier now so <clears throat> it was i was so bad to the point where i was going to him once a week um maybe more than that at times and um surprisingly i never had to have a psych admission to a hospital or anything so that that was good um so there was days i missed school because i just couldn't take it anymore and my parents were very understanding about that, um, for the most part. So, I transferred schools in seventh grade, started my seventh grade year at a new school, and that's where I met some people that you guys have seen in videos. Phil, Pat, um, Chelsea, Casey. I met some of them, and they were always very good friends with me. I'm not really friends with Chelsea anymore, but that's not really something that needs to be in public. Um, but I'm still friends with Chelsea, Phil, or I'm sorry, Casey, Phil, and Pat. I still see Pat every day. He sits at my lunch table. He drives me to school every day because I don't have a car for most days of the week for school. So they instantly became my best friends. I talk to Phil and Pat fairly regularly. Casey, not so much, but I still talk to her, and she's still a really good friend of mine. So... 7th and 8th grade were good years. I was finally accepted into a place, and I was finally happy. Freshman year, 
I started dating a girl named Caitlin. Now, Caitlin was in my 8th grade class, and I had been crushing on her since probably September of my 8th grade year, so September of 2012. So her and I finally started dating in October of 2013. Yes, it took me that long to make a move. I was a pussy. She was my first girlfriend. My first real girlfriend. I had dated before, but I didn't even, like, kiss a girl or anything. So... <clears throat> Um, Caitlin and I went out for about two months and then she cheated on me um, and I found out and I confronted her about it and she ended up breaking up with me instead of me breaking up with her which whatever no big deal so that drove me into a really bad state of depression um, I couldn't find a girl that could make me think about them and like the way I thought about Caitlin and I thought you know my little 14 year old heart was broken and I, don't, I didn't think I was ever going to recover and you know that whole shit so <clears throat> for almost two years I didn't date somebody um, there was me liking this girl Nina I was really obsessed with Nina for my sophomore year um, I asked her out and she told me she was going to die of kidney failure soon and she's still alive to this day so yeah uh, I hope you see this because that was really fucked up um she could have just said no. So, anyway, I go to my junior year, and I'm getting desperate at this point. I'm like, okay, I really need to start dating. I haven't had a girlfriend since freshman year. This is, you know, this needs to happen. So, I kind of acted on what I thought was feelings for somebody, and it wasn't. And yes, it makes me sound like a dick, I know. Um, but you guys saw her in one of my days in the life's... So, um, Gianna and yeah so another thing I did in junior year was I did I split my days half at Votech half at my home school which is my like legitimate school not an actual home school like I don't take school at home I go to a real school so um, I did EMT school in the morning and I met some of my closest friends in there I met Nate J I met Mark I met Skyler I met um, Eric Erica Mike, people, oh, I had already known Mike, but, um, I got to meet some of my closest friends, and that was awesome, um, and then, I was, my friend John joined the ambulance that I was at, um, and he said, him and I, like, had met before, but we didn't really know each other that well, so once he joined the ambulance, I started working with him, and John and I started hanging out, so, after I broke up with Gianna, my whole summer I focused on, you know, spending time at, with my friends. And mainly I was with John, Colton, and a bunch of other people. Um, so, I started to get more depressed as my surgery came along. As you guys know, I had back surgery in July of last year. July of 2016, for those of you who might be watching this later. Um... I started to get depressed, thinking, why me, you know? Um, and this is leading up, this is in April, like right after my birthday. Um, I started getting depressed. And then to top off my depression, my cousin Abby died from kidney failure. Um, ultimately from kidney, kidney failure. She had been sick for years. Uh, she was 15 years old. Um, and that crushed me i actually got the news i was at the mmrbq which i may have may or may not have talked about on this channel um which is a concert festival around here um and the last act was on stage getting ready to go on stage and my parents told me because i could see it in their face and they knew i would be pissed if they didn't so that crushed me uh, i lost my 15 year old cousin it was the first death i had ever experienced so that got me thinking like what if I don't make it out of my surgery? What if I die? And another thing it caused me was really bad issues with, with God. Um, I really started to have a lot of issues with believing that there is a God up there, believing that there is Jesus, that Jesus was resurrected or whatever. And as you guys know, I go to a Catholic school, so I kind of had to stay quiet about my beliefs. So to hurt the situation even more, after my surgery, I had just recovered. I'm feeling really optimistic. And then my grandma, my grandma Peggy, my my one of someone I was really close with who I spent a lot of time with growing up. She started 
uh, she got really sick. She had been sick for a couple years. She had dementia, but she got really sick. Um, and so I went down to visit her. I learned from my mistake of not being able to see Abby before she died that I went and took the opportunity, the only opportunity I had to go see my grandmother who was dying. And I went to her nursing home and she was not herself and she ended up dying the next morning. So I am very glad that I went down to see her. Um, I spent, or, I'm sorry, she died two days later. So I'm very glad to find out that, or to know that I had gotten to see her before she died and that I learned from my mistake. So that didn't help because at one point she was a nun and then she left the convent and married my grandpa. She's my step, my mom's stepmom, but she was always very respectful of us and very nice to us. So she, that like really made me question God even more. And then in October of 2016, my, my great grandmom, who was 96, died also. And so I had three deaths in less than six months and it really started to cause me to doubt my faith, doubt my, doubt everything that I had ever been taught. So at this point I was talking to Jacqueline and Jacqueline knew about my issues with God and everything. So she knew full well about my issues and everything. And I asked her out October 22nd, 2016 best decision I ever made um, and she said yes thankfully and you guys have seen her in videos and um, or have heard me talk about her or have seen her on Twitter um, well on my Twitter so she really helped me get through the depression and uh, one thing I didn't mention was that after my grandma Peggy died I thought started to think about what this life would be like without her or without me what this world would be like without me. And thankfully, I didn't even have to voice that for someone to pick it up. And Jacqueline, who I just started talking to, just she just helped me without even knowing it. And I've told my I've told her multiple times that I honestly think her my grandma put her in my life. Um because I needed somebody. I needed a shoulder to lean on and she was my shoulder to cry on. So, after all of that, Jacqueline really helped me get through and start being happy, and I was really happy again, and um, I started to get depressed in March, and that lasted like three days, because she's like, no, you're not doing this, and she helped me through it, she made me talk about it, and it was a very emotional night, I talked about it, and I don't regret it at all. Um because I've felt so much better since. And recently I have started to get back on track with God and everything. I've started to believe that there is a God, um, not necessarily going back to being Catholic, but definitely not criticizing. Cause it was to the point where I was criticizing people that believed in God and I would question it. And I listened to, I would, I would pull into my school's parking lot blasting like satanic music, like Ghost BC, which as you guys know, their whole thing is making fun of the Catholic Church. So, um, I have since, since started to be on better terms with God. I've gone to church a few times. Um, I've started praying, participating in prayers during school and stuff like that. Um, and that was all inspired by Jacqueline. So when I talk about how important she is, it's not just like, you know, the hugs, the kisses. It's not all of that. It's literally, she's done so much for me. She's made my life so much better and I can't thank her enough. And I really hope she's seeing this and smiling right now. So, uh, but yes, my life is at its peak of happiness. I'm committed to a nursing school next year. I ultimately want to be a critical care nurse. I'm committed to one of the best nursing schools in the country. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for graduation. I have two proms coming up. And by the time you guys are seeing this, it'll be the week of a prom. May 5th and May 12th are my proms. I can't wait to go. I can't wait to see Jacqueline in her dress. I can't wait to dress up in a tux. I can't wait for all of that. There's so much to look forward to. And life is really good right now. So that's my story, guys. 
mostly I talked about depression this time and yeah so thank you guys so much for watching comment like subscribe follow me on Twitter be down description below as always guys have a crazy HD thanks for watching enjoy the ride see you guys later